So, Roger, you're uh, you're really letting yourself go in retirement, huh? You doing okay? You... It's just another suit. Just another just, suit. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so everything's great. Nice to see you. It's great to see you. Yeah. I remember the last time that we spent time on this wonderful court at Labor Cup was a pretty monumental occasion. It was the last competitive match of your career. It's been one year. What do those memories look like now with a, a little bit of time to reflect on them? It's been, uh, it's been a great year first, and it's nice to see you all. Thank you for coming to the Labor Cup. And it's uh, great to be back at the Labor Cup uh, one year later, and if I look back at the at the memories, uh, I thought the farewell was uh, beautiful, it was perfect, it was uh, emotional, it, there was some proper suffering going on throughout my talk with you and the moments spent with the team and uh, with London, the fans, the family in the moment, uh, I don't think could have been any nicer. I was always dreading the moment uh, for years because I knew it was going to come. And I know that sometimes when we see our tennis heroes, we don't remember actually how they went out. All we remember is all the great things they did for tennis. And I was just worried that my end was somehow going to be not nice. And it was the opposite. It was great. I felt really uh, good about it and very happy. And uh, something I guess I was very lucky to experience. Well, tennis has been such a, a big part of your life, and you've become such a big part of ours as a result of it. We miss you. Do you miss tennis? Do you miss being out on tour? Of, co of course I do. Of course I do, guys. Um, I, I, yeah, in a way, I miss everything about uh, the game and uh, the exciting moments spent on court, the break points saved, uh, winning match points, holding up trophies, uh, walking past fans, taking selfies. It's all part of one big happy family on the tour. Um, I still have those moments from time to time, you know, when, when I went to Wimbledon or I went to Halle, and I, I've made it myself a promise that I will be no stranger to the tour. I will try to come back from time to time, not all the time, but from time to time. And, uh, and that's why I'm so happy to be here as well. Also, it's been beautiful to be at home more. I mean, I've been also been traveling, been busy, but, uh, you know, it's great to don't have the weight of another match, of another practice where maybe the body is not right. And uh, just spending time with friends and family has been an incredible, it's been an incredible year, honestly. Um, but sure, I do miss a lot of the, the places that I used to travel to regularly. And I have so many friends there and we used to have the best time. And um, yeah, so can't have it all. I've had it for 25 years and it was incredible. And I would do it all over again, but... Uh, it came to an end in a great way. You always made it look so easy on the court, but we, we recognize that you put in a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of work to, to reach your greatness. What do you do with that extra time in the day now that you're not spending perfecting tennis? That there's probably a fair bit of it. Yeah, there's uh, days are long. Um, but uh, at the same time, I still feel I don't have enough time, you know, because I pack my schedule up. Um, four kids will do that to you as well. So I'm a professional driver nowadays and uh, organizer and a logistics man. So it's, uh, yeah, it's uh, definitely a test on a completely another level. Um, and then, uh, I mean, there's lots going on. I'm still in the gym. Actually, I'm surprised I'm going to the gym. I always used to dread the moment of going to the gym, so I do that like four or five times a week, believe it or not. I don't look the part, maybe. No, no, no wait. But, wait I, hold on. <laughs> well, let's stop you for one second now. Are, are you still at your playing weight, or have you sort of let it go a little bit? No, no, I'm a little bit heavier, unfortunately. You're so it well. I'm working on that right now. I'm on a well. diet. No. <laughs> I don't think so. No, no. It's all good. But uh, no, so I'm, I'm doing gym and then I got loads of projects and uh, just, uh, I don't know, there's, there's a lot of fun things uh, to be done uh, and to be part of a lot of with my, with my partners. Um, yeah, I did uh, passion projects as well. I'm working on stuff I can't reveal quite yet, but look good, good stuff. So it's been great. One thing that we got to share, uh, that's worth applause, feel free to anytime. 
Over the years, we've gotten to hear your singing voice a little bit. We know you're a little musical, maybe not a lot musical, but we didn't realize that you actually were part of a, of a band at one point in time and, and that you got to kind of re visit that moment with, with the band. I don't know if you guys ever heard of a band they might be playing next door right now, Coldplay. What, what was this all about? Where did this happen? What were you doing on stage with Coldplay? Hello. That was, yeah. I don't know what I was doing. I was, I was moving my hand <laughs> and smiling and uh, yeah, just uh, being me. But uh, it was, uh, uh, I got the invitation from Chris Martin from Coldplay. He, he said, don't, do you want to come up on stage tomorrow? I was in Zurich at the time. I just came back from the Elton John concert, you know, stuff you just do when you don't have much to do anymore. And, uh, and, now, and I looked at my daughter and, she, and I told her, um, do you think I should go on stage and do this? And she was half falling asleep after the Elton John concert. She's like, of course, Papa, you only live once. Of course you got to do it. So I'm like, okay, I'll go on stage, I'll do it. And of course I enjoyed it after, but you know, I don't need sometimes those anxiety moments anymore. I'm just happy and quite content to be away from it all. But uh, I finished on top, you know? This yeah. is my music career. I ended it right there. Stadium show. I dropped the mic and I'm good. Fantastic. <laughs> Well, it's not, it's not just me asking the questions up here. I'm also a conduit for some of our viewers, both uh, on social media and in the audience, who okay. want to hear from you. So our first one tonight is from Nandita, who's up in uh, section 118. And the question is, professional tennis seems like a lonely journey. What do you love the most about the camaraderie in Labor Cup? Yeah, so it can be very lonely on tour, it's true. Um, I've been, of course, very fortunate to have a wonderful team um, throughout my career. Um, I feel like at every step of the way, the team grew a lot um, because that's how the tennis players do it. Once you make more money, you can invite more people around. Then my parents then would also join me from time to time. And we had loads of friends, like I said before, that would always come and uh, visit me on tour. And then the kids came, so we were a whole traveling circus. So it was incredible. But uh, um, being in a team environment, I think for an individual athlete like a tennis player is, is a is a great, great thing. And that's why I'm, I've always been a big team player. And for me, the Labor Cup, I guess, um, is, is, a, is an amazing combination of all that. You know, being on the team with other heroes and being together, having dinner together, lunch together, talking tennis all day, and just feeding off one another. And hopefully leaving the Labor Cup uh, motivated and inspired to go on and you know do great things and and win every tournament you possibly can and i feel like the labor cup did that for me as well it really gave me uh, something to look forward to and then also something to talk about after i had left it so i think for us individual athletes sometimes it's uh, it's tough you know when you win that's why we just saw the great celebration of francis and tommy you know how they're like jumping at each other i don't know what they were doing but they were doing something and uh, you know, when you win, you're alone on the court, right? And it's game, set, and match, and you win, and you're there all by yourself, but you would like to hug the whole crowd, but they're tucked away, right? And uh, that's why I think winning in a team is, is a great thing and um, can release a, a lot of great emotions like we've seen also again today. Yeah, no doubt. That's a great question. We're going to keep going with some more audience questions. They uh, have you screened the questions? We or? screened them. Oh, yeah, okay. they're, they're safe. Because they could be like tough math questions. I don't no, know. No, that I, I no, have no chance answering. You think your team's going to expose you to stuff like that? They know well, you can no, handle Not the them. team, but Jim, maybe Jim Curry would good. Like, I might. <laughs> That's possible. That's a good point. Um, but this one comes from Kelly. She's in section 107. So thank you, Kelly, for this one. As the father of two teenage girls, what is your best advice for staying on their good side. <laughs> Told you there might be some curveballs. There, there you go. Um, <laughs> they were screened. I, I'm just happy to being allowed to live in my own house still. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, Thinking it's, about this one carefully, yeah, it's, aren't you? Yeah, it's tough times. It's tough times. They're amazing. I love them, but my God, I can't believe um, that they are who they are right now at 14. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like I've taught them everything and more. 
And uh, yeah, at the moment it's complicated, but in a good way, you know? So I know it's gonna pass, <laughs> but I also like it if it stays, because I like that my girls have a, have a strong character. Yeah. So it's all good. And I think my, maybe my two cents of advice is, I'm happy that they come and shout and cry at home yeah. instead of doing that away. Like this, I know they can still share the, all their emotions with me and we talk about everything. And I love the honesty, so it's all good. So, uh, I'm not sure, do we have, uh, are we able to, to get down to uh, Roger's old team captain? Okay, so we have your old team captain who would like to ask you a question. So you have your ears on, you can hear this. So uh, if you're listening, Bjorn, fire yes. when ready. Oh, there he is, the king. Uh, hello, Roger. Roger, my good friend, uh, first of all, uh, we miss you in tennis. The world miss you in tennis. Uh, I have one, yes. that's very true. I have one question, Roger. In the future, would you like to be the team captain for Team Europe? <laughs> that, that position is so locked by you forever. <laughs> and I don't call you a king for uh, any reason, because you are the best. Bjorn, I've loved my years with you as a team captain. I've spent time with you. has been incredible, just to let you know. Love you, Bjorn. It's great to see you again, and it's great to see you again here this week. So thank you again for being here. Roger, we love you. Yeah, thank you. Thank and you. Uh, yes, I mean, why not one day? I don't think right away, but uh, I'm absolutely open to the thoughts and uh, the idea to have great captains, good assistant captains, or also co-captains, whatever you wanted to call it. But uh, just want to... Uh, it, give back to the game in any shape or form. And of course, being a captain of the Labour Cup will be definitely one of those things. I think you know the right people to make that happen. <laughs> Thanks, Bjorn. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we're back to a, a social media question for you here. So we're just keep darting all over the place. So, what is your favorite match ever at Labour Cup that you watched from the bench that you didn't play? but that you were just watching as a spectator on the team. Oh, now I gotta like start thinking. How much time do I have? I mean, okay. Uh, no I, one's leaving. Okay, so I, I remember a Isner team match that ended really deep in the super, in the labor breaker, super tiebreaker. Um, that one I thought was fun. Um, then I remember did you win it? Is that, like, did no. the Team Europe win that one? Is that why it was so fun? No, no, it was just great tennis. And okay. I love big servers. I know some people get bored from big servers. I love it. I think it's the best thing ever when just it's just raining aces and stuff like that. I don't know. I, I get a kick out of it. So, and then Dominic was trying to figure it out. And it was, anyway, it's just a great, great match for me to watch. And then I think uh, Francis against Tsitsipas last year to clinch oh, it. Amazing match. So it was a saving four or five match points. Yeah. It was wild we needed it they needed it and they got it done at the end and it was I don't know I thought it was a great match and maybe the last one I remember maybe is the Zverev against the uh, Rayonich match uh, that where I needed to pep talk uh, Sasha in the corridor maybe some people have seen it I just wanted more energy out of him and he gave it to us and um, we ended up winning and that was an epic epic moment for me at Labour Cup There have been many, and there will be many more throughout this weekend. We, we've got a, a viewer question that's been sent in, this one by video. So let's all watch the video board and see, uh, see what this is all about. <laughs> hey, Roger. How are you? I hope you're doing very well. I just have a question for you. Who's been your favorite doubles partner? <laughs> I mean, I mean, I thought it was my wife, you know, until this guy showed up, you know. So, yeah, 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 Rafa can have it. Rafa gets yeah, it. Yeah, Rafa can have it. Do you want to wink back at him? Yeah, Rafa, no problem. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's been, I mean, last year was, I mean, 
on another level special. So yeah, we'll share that forever. Well, we have a we have a question coming up now from someone who shared that stage with you. One of your opponents in that match has uh, something to say as well. So let's welcome in Mr. Tiafo. What's up? What's going on? What's going on? <laughs> Um, Rock, I just want to ask you, in a Hollywood movie about your life, who would play you and who might play Novak and Rafa? Oh my god, you're asking me a question here. Let's just start with you. Who would play you? Me? I... I... I this is so bad. I don't know. Uh, I almost have to give on the question, but I don't know. Leo here's DiCaprio? A, I don't here, here's know. Here's a hint. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Here's a hint. Here, here's a hint. We're in Canada. Let's go with Ryan Reynolds. What about that? Right, uh, yes. Right? I'm happy with that too. Ryan Reynolds is good, yeah. Right? For sure. I think that's pretty good. And then uh, Novak and Rafa. Me, yeah. What about me? Oh my God. I mean. Who would play me, Rocky? Any ideas from the crowd? And what are we hearing? Tom Holland. Tom Holland. Pretty good. Yeah. This is tough. I don't know. Um, Francis, you got any ideas back have? there? What do we have? Matthew McConaughey, he was in, in Novak's box, yeah, box yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Francis, you have any ideas? And maybe one for Rafa. Francis, help me out. <laughs> oh, for Rafa, um, I, I got nothing for Antonio you, Antonio Banderas. <laughs> oh, Antonio. Okay. So, I don't know. All right, it's a bit of a reach. That's a tough question. That's a tough Nick question, Trump. like this on the spot. He was a tough opponent last year for you. He's tough again tonight. Yeah, he's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I've got one for you that's not annoying at all. All right, this one you're going to like a lot. This is from Olivia, who's over here in section 118. And her question is, Roger, I'm nine years old. What advice would you give to a nine-year-old Roger Federer? Trying to process, yeah. Um, uh, well, have fun when you go to practice, have a good time, listen to your parents, listen to your coaches, they're right, <laughs> you know, and uh, maybe you would have had a better career with a double hand of backhand, you know? <laughs> <What>? <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, I'm happy with my one-hander, but um, yeah, so that, th those, those advices, yeah. Let's dig a little deeper on this backhand crisis we're, we're just now finding out about. So your kids, I believe they play a little bit of tennis. They like it a little bit. Yep. They have one-handers or two-handers? What did you advise them there? I mean, that's logical, right? One-hander, your one-hander is amazing. Yeah, they, but, but all four of them have a double-hander. <laughs> they do, huh? Yeah, of course they do. Actually, I'm going to come home and, and tell them, let's go to the one-hander, and I want to see how awful it will be <laughs> no well, well actually we should try it out because i don't know if i fr forever no I, I played with a double hand of forehand and a yep. double hand of backhand yep. at the beginning because of the heavy rackets yep and then i don't know when i switched to the one-hander completely so and i wonder how many of you know Vavrinka and team and Tsitsipas when they switched mm. it's actually interesting uh, we should do some Sampras, research. Sampras's best shot when he was a junior was his two-handed backhand, and he switched because his coach wanted him to, oh, wow. to be more adept at the net and thought the well, one-handers had yeah. better volleys. Turned out okay for him. Turned yeah. out okay for you, I yeah, think. Yeah, it was okay for us, actually. Right? Yeah, it wasn't that bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not too bad. Now, we're yeah. ta we've talked a lot about your amazing past and the mark that you've left on, on this sport. What about what the future holds for Roger Federer? You're a guy with lots of goals, lots of things in mind. What does the next 25 years look like for you? Ooh, 25 years. Well, we can start with five and work our way. Yeah, I know. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a really intense, beautiful life that I'm living right now with the, with the children and, and Mirka. We're having the best time, really. A um, lot of things going on. I feel like I'm finally sort of controlling my schedule now because after the Labor Cup last year, there was still so many things organized because I didn't know I was going to retire in the fall. So I feel like um, midway through this year, um, I could start to, you know, dictate my schedule much more and it was, uh, and it was great. So that's something obviously I'm starting to master better now. And I think it's going to be important for just the family and my friends and, you know, where we go, how we go about everything because every 
you know, week, months changes, you know, with, with the children. So it's all good there. I mean, obviously I've uh, done a lot with the, the foundation as always. I've just been to the UN as well, you know, fighting for early learning uh, again this last Monday. So that's something I, I enjoy a lot. In particular, um, I took the kids and Mirka, we were all went finally for the first time as a family to Lesotho down in South, by, just by South Africa on a field trip with the foundation. That was uh, um, a dream of mine since 20 years since I started the foundation. We're celebrating the 20 years now, so I know that that's going to be something that's going to be definitely in my life in 25 years in some shape or form to be able to give back. And then, um, I mean, new, new projects, come up, you know, and you'll see. I don't want to be too opportunistic as well. Um, I'm saying no to a lot of things at the moment, which is not the most fun bit, you know, because everybody thinks I've got so much time, so I get tons of invitations. I can't be everywhere, but uh, I, know, I know I'll take the right decisions. I have a wonderful team around me and a great wife. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to, to what's next, and some tennis has to be sprinkled in there somewhere, yeah. somehow. So. I'll be around and I'll see you again. We're so glad to have you with us. Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause. Thank he is the so one much. and the only. Roger Thank Federer. Much. Thank you for coming tonight. I appreciate it. Good to see you all. It's been a pleasure to be here again. Thank you. So great to see uh, Roger Federer in the house again. I'm with uh, Jason Goodall. Jason, uh, we could sit here for another hour or two hours and listen to Roger Federer.